This is the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners for the Sanitary District. And it's 5.30 and we're starting the meeting. And this is being uh, recorded. I'll call the meeting to order. And then, uh, I guess, Jerry, if you want to administer or I'll how, how you want to do this? Want me to raise my right hand? And yeah, you're your hand. I'll read it to you and then repeat after me. Or do you just want to read it? I, I, just I, have, read them, it. I have them repeated after me. Okay. Uh, oath of Office. I, John Prather, having been elected to the Office of Director of the Utah's Oceanside Sanitary District, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, and the laws thereof, and the policies of the Utah's. Oceanside Sanitary District, and I, that I will faithfully discharge the duties of director according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I know I wasn't here, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be back. So we'll get that signed. Or let me just. or discussion? Uh, I, I wanted to revisit just briefly the um, low income uh, fund and what we're doing to publicize it. I don't know, maybe I should just do that during the board questions. Why don't, why don't we cover that? Yeah. Okay. A little bit later. That's fine. <coughs> now, I might add that uh, I think, has everybody seen the old harmless agreement now that came out this afternoon? So we'll discuss that under item A, under old business, when we get to that. Okay. Uh, the next item is the election of board officers. Are we going to all say aye on approving the agenda? Yeah, uh, you're right. All in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay. Election of board officers. Um, <clears throat> I guess we're making this just a tad more formal, which is appropriate. Uh, I've been starting with the board chairperson. I've been it for, I guess, a couple of years. Uh, if somebody else wants to be the board chairperson, I will be happy to step aside and help that person out wherever I can. Uh, alternatively, I'm willing to serve another year. So uh, as far as discussion of that item, is there anybody? And I mean, you know, I know some people want to hold on to positions. I think we ought to just share things here. I mean, as far as the duties and responsibilities and not just have one person always be the person and demand that everybody else follow them. So, any discussion or comments? I think we can do that without worrying about titles. I, yeah. Yeah. And I know it is a 15 year high second. <laughs> really? Craig well, didn't tell me that. Group is your all favor? I, uh, we just voted you president. So. Okay. So I got Chairman. voting. <laughs> Chairman. Dictator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we get to the important positions. Treasurer. Um, I took it because I, it was my turn and I hadn't really done it. I had no special expertise, but I'm willing to do it because I still I want to have like a month. And I think like I have to. I, it's all in favor. <laughs> Say aye. 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 It's, it's only fair. I've avoided things for the first year or so. So this is still my turn. Okay, secretary. What does the secretary do? Secretary can sign so off on things, but really, it's there's not too much in the way of actual responsibilities. It mainly falls. Sign, 
ministerial signing stuff. Signing stuff. And usually they do the in the executive session. You take the minutes. That's because there's not generally any importance. What happens to the minutes in the executive session? We have a file that they go into. Okay. They're not. They're not published. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would be willing to be secretary if nobody else wants to do it. So moved. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 See, we're sharing here. I just wanted to be election while we were writing down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have no guests, uh, no real public comments, and board questions, comments, and discussion. Did you want to? Sure. Um, I, wanna, I, mean, I was looking through the budget and saw that we have the fund and there's $6,000 in it. Um, uh, I remember that you spoke to the people who manage the billing website and for whatever reason that I'm not sure I completely understand it was too complicated for them to add a line and hook it up to expensive expensive yeah it was the cost it's the cost it was a lot more than what we would have in there yeah to pay for it for a year yeah so since that strikes me as the most obvious way to publicize it We do have a lot, and we put on the front cover um, a low income where we accept donations, where we also have the application and everything. The so it's on the cover of our the, website. Of the website. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could have that a similar message on the billing website? Mm -hmm. Not hook up to anything, but just words that people say see? Yes. Doesn't everybody get a card? Yes. And it's on the card as well, so they get a physical copy. Even if they pay online, they get a physical copy, which talks about the. I don't think I get it. Not not everybody gets the postcard get if they're email, on. But it looks the, the same. If they're on e-bill. Yeah. But it looks the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it looks identical email. to our paper billing. But I don't have an objection. You can point of purchase, you know, they see it. Oh, okay. And while they're making the check. They had something for the program. Right. Um, I guess that's okay, right? Yeah, Maybe? that's. Yeah, checks are fine. I think that's that's a logical time place to do it and an effective place to do it. And if the if the online site said anybody wanting to make a donation, send it to X Y Z, then we don't have to worry about. Is that, is that on there? It is on the our website. Okay. Which you go no, to that. So I was thinking of the billing website place where people, because people don't necessarily go to a, our website regularly. Well, you go to our website and then you click pay online, which takes you to the, Unless but I can add verbiage the on the website and then you go straight to the billing website because you Well, they have to go through that to get to the billing website. But there's, I can add verbiage yeah, okay. to both. There's no way for them to pay it while they're on their billing. Right. So yeah. somebody, yeah, that we have yeah. to accept no, no, cash. I'm just, just looking for ways to, to advertise. Yeah. So, so that the website, what do they see? Um, it, it has just an announcement and then it says log in where I can put something on there. Mm -hmm. um, when you go to our main website, you would see it on there and then you can click um, mm -hmm. pay online and then it would take you to a login, which I could just say, all I can say is something in red. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be flashy or pictures or it anything, doesn't, but it doesn't I can add it there. Too. I just, I, I, I think I'm most worried about people who are maybe on fixed income and who are terribly responsible and always pay their bills, but we don't know that they're in trouble. So I, I want them to think, oh, there is a low income assistance. Maybe I should ask about it, you know? Um, and it's only supported by donations. Right. We don't budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, if we ask, if, if we ask for a donation mm -hmm. to it, that alerts people to the existence of it. And, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. No, no, no it's, it's fine. good. I can I add mean, it to that page too. I, it's it's tough to identify the people that are actually in need because they don't want to tell you they're they're in need either. Mm -hmm. Probably, 
in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And did I talk about the history of this before? Yeah. It, it, Briefly. With the yeah. new big bond issue and stuff. Right. Right. That was part yeah. of the house. So we thought, particularly in Utah, there was half a dozen or so mm -hmm. single wides, you know, mm -hmm. from the 50s mm -hmm. that were falling apart. And, mm -hmm. and I knew that the boost was going to be a problem, but we haven't had that many people use it. You know, I, mean, I, I noticed that right less than a hand, you, you less than a handful used it in one hand. Yeah, 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 a lot of yeah. There's no three. Your concerns are real. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just as important, you know, to make sure that we people can donate mm -hmm. or know that they, you know, mm -hmm. it's available to donate as well mm -hmm. as. Away. I agree with that. So if you want to run word by me or something, I'd be happy to look at it. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. That's good. <coughs> All right. Review of the minutes of 20 July. A motion to accept the minutes of 20 July. Second. The only question I had was on page five. Is there a second? Oh, I second. Sorry. I said the same. I'm sorry. Discussion. Go uh, ahead. Uh, on page five, under correspondences, um, second to last line, it says the board wants to reassure you that this is not setting precedent. Who is the you? Yeah, it looked like you were writing it to the people that we were talking to, writing it really is just the board just made, just made it clear that. Wants to make it clear that we're not setting a precedent? Yeah. yeah. The board emphasizes this is not a precedent for protecting views. Any other discussion? All in favor of accepting the minutes say aye. Aye, aye. And I was not in attendance, so. <clears throat> the next item was, is the uh, June 22nd special Emergency Board of Directors meeting minutes, which was uh, very short, and it was the second meeting of the ordinance 2301 <clears throat> to establish the sanitary sewer fee increase and thereby declaring an emergency. A motion to accept the, these minutes, only however the, brief. Only the people that yeah. want that meeting. Any discussion? The minutes reflect my memory of the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Financial statements. <coughs> As of July 31st. Motion to accept the uh, financial statement. So moved. I'll second. Discussion. Anything you want to point out, Aaron? Yes. I thought so. Page one under personal services, personal services, up to the, uh, towards the bottom. We will most likely exceed four of those, three to four of those line items. Um, we just, we didn't budget enough to cover those. So one of the worst ones will be the public employee's retirement. Mm -hmm. That'll probably come up about $35,000 short before the end of the fiscal year. Um, 
workers' compensation, the same thing. Payroll tax, the same thing, but not near as bad. Um, just yeah, the only one that's 35,000 <coughs> public employees retired. Right. Yeah. When you say the same thing, there is a shortfall, but it's proportionally smaller than 35,000. Yeah, um, so, so I'm still working on the calculations, but you know, um, starting probably in March, um, the public employees' retirement will start to go red. Um, it'll go over. When I was given the budget numbers, two employees were completely left out of the budget, which follows suit with the other line items on the personnel. So even though those go red, even though those go negative, uh, as long as we don't exceed the bottom number, the total number at the bottom. What, how much do we have? Ever, will we be able to cover that? Um, I'm thinking we can get all the way to June, sometime in June, and we might come up a couple of thousand short for the entire budget under this line, under this category. And then, um, I'm dealing with this at the fire department. Uh, do we have a plan? Do we have an emergency fund that we can do a supplemental budget from? Well, um, we, we have the ability to transfer between funds. Right. So we can transfer out of our capital resource into our general fund. We just can't direct it directly into. I just said with us, we, we also have an emergency equipment fund, but we have right. to do a supplemental budget on that to, yeah. to change that to cover other expenditures yeah. through to right. for the Secretary of State's office. I just didn't know if we need to make that, make, maybe put that on the May agenda to do a supplemental budget. Well, right now, we do, I, I don't have enough information. This is the first, this is the end of July. So now I have the, the actual true numbers. Um, I found out about it at the end of June when um, there was another problem. Um, our, our liability insurance for this fiscal year was paid out of last fiscal year. So that one went over budget. This one won't have but 70 some dollars out of it for the year. So I know we can go over certain, we can go over lines. We just can't go over, we can't go over the total. So at this point, I'm not sure we're gonna go over the total. But in, in hard money, in the, in the capital, fund that we have, we have hard money in there that would cover yes, if yes. we needed to transfer. General fund will not go over per se, so it's not going to run over in the checkbook. It's just the no, budget. Ours is going to run over the checkbook. Ours will not so, run over the that's checkbook. That's why I was asking because we're, we're in a situation where and I'm gonna, the Secretary of State has told us to find a loan. I'm going to ask the auditor, because you can borrow money from yourself, but we already have in there to transfer funds. But the, but the total general fund will, will not go negative, okay? So that's the good news. The bad news is I gotta ask the auditor what the law is if you exceed a category, the total at the bottom. I know we've gone over lines before in categories, that's okay, as long as you don't go over the total budgeted for that category. That's where we have to really watch it. And it's not gonna show up till Till June may not even show up till July one at the end of June whether whether we we came in under or not. So you have time to confirm whatever procedures. Yes, yeah, I would like to I would like to talk to the because uh, we're getting ready to go through our audit. So those are questions I have down to ask the auditor. Um, I just you know just want the board aware now that we I just discovered the uh, the budgeting numbers were that far off. So I'm just glad we have money to cover it. Anyway. Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it's it, it's it's not a matter of cash, so we don't know how to go out to the bank and borrow money. Okay. So there's plenty of money to, in that in in the general fund. I just want the board aware. As you go, you will see this probably starting March. Uh, the most uh, uh, the the first one you're going to see is the retirement PERS, and then payroll taxes. Everything is affected. When you when you don't account you know calculate <coughs> payer increases or addition of employees, I think we need to say on the record that you are aware and the board is aware of the reasons for this and the reasons are not being placed on the record because they may be privileged. 
um, and much as they have been discussed in the executive session, so that there's not this big gap in our record about nobody's reacting to the fact right. that this happened. We are aware, we are aware of why, uh, and, this, and steps have been taken to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, uh, uh, if you look on page six, you'll see the negative $50,000 for the disbursements for the bonds. Since a lot of you, this is your first year here, I just want to let you know that is normal. The other funds carry it until we start receiving the tax income checks from the um, fr from the county. That's you get the total majority in November of your taxes? I was going to say, is it November or December? Somewhere well, we usually start in July, <clears throat> August, we start getting checks. Sometimes this doesn't go red because we do get them in. But uh, we just haven't got enough in yeah. to cover it, so the other funds carry it. Too. This is the this is the stuff that's billed with property tax. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, yeah. you have the option to pay. Because yeah. they, uh, if I remember right, they're on the card for property tax. If you pay it all in November, you get a discount. Yeah. yeah. So we tend to get a lot of ours in November because people want the discount. Yeah. So when we did the incorporation budget, yeah, um, about ninety percent plus came in November. Yeah. People took the discount. Only ten percent came in the rest of the year. So if, if you want to track this so that you know where we're at, go to page eight and you'll see that the general fund at the top is quite healthy. So anything that we exceed, unless we have some catastrophic failures or you know unplanned for expenses, we're, we're not going to go over where we have to go out and borrow money. This is going to be more of an audit, an auditing issue than anything else. That's why we paying the, the big bucks, right? That's why we're paying the big bucks. So if, if you want to track the help, the financial help, always go to page eight, and that gives you the totals of each fund and, and where they currently sit at the end of the month prior. Okay. So that's all I have, John. Okay, um, I have one. No questions are pretty. <laughs> uh, on the hookups on page three, um, uh, there's, we're no longer in the 2020, 22, 23, we're in the 23, 24, is that correct? Yes. Yes. So the three that are listed up there, that's three. Yeah, this go down to the bottom of the 22-23 at 18.5. Right. I think it is, which is the rollover of what we have been tracking up till now. Uh, <coughs> but there, but there should be, should there be a, a 23-24 with three so far? Is am I understanding that? There should be, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's the column of historic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're not, that's not history. Uh, okay. I'm done with that. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure I understood where everything was fitting together. <coughs> then when all those people build, uh, buy their lots in Cougar Ridge and start building, this will just explode. Yeah. Right? We have others going on besides Cooper Ranch that this is still going to continue to go up. All in favor of accepting the financial statement, say aye. 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 Board audit. Check, uh, what is that? 18738. 
for the workers' comp. You'll see that it's 7958. That is the only thing that's going to come out of that line item for the year. So when you see 99% left at at the end of the budget year, you, that is why. Yeah. I'll move to accept it. A second. All right. District report. Excuse me. No. no. Sorry. Not a board action. Sorry. But we're glad you accepted. <laughs> okay, so some things changed after I wrote this district report. So um, we're still waiting for Kinswall to set up a date with us on when he's going to come out so we can do the training and, and uh, for both crews on the <coughs> collection system, inspection, and cleaning. Um, CAPES, uh, one pump station I've I've made the board aware that it has that leak in the pipe. And I received an estimate. I wanted, I, I told you last month, I wanted to get an estimate from Emory and Sons. So the estimate, and this is just an estimate, our best estimate for what we do, <coughs> what damage needs to be fixed. So the total cost that we estimate now is $38,955. Most of that is labor and equipment. Uh, we're looking at probably around um, six or seven thousand dollars for for materials. Pipe. Uh, right now, we have in this estimate we put in to replace two one elbow and two spools. If we don't have to, of course, this will drop. There will always be an unknown. Uh, we're probably going to have to cut and remove some of the concrete parking area if we have to get closer to the valve vault, but we're not going to we're not going to know that for sure until we actually Emory gets in there and has to remove all the bracing to remove the rusted out pipe. At that point we'll get a better inspection of where we're at. So this should be an extreme top end unless there's something that they dig up that we were completely unaware of or that doesn't match the drawing. But this should be pretty close. I expect it to come under this a little bit. Not by much because most of these are hard numbers. Uh, the hours could change a little bit on labor, but the equipment and the mode and demode is, is going to pretty much stay the same. He's budgeted in here for two days of work, a day to mode, day to demo, clean up everything, re re reinstate the surface. Uh, but most of that is hard equipment costs and labor costs. So the current amount is $38,955. So I'm asking the board to do that as a not to exceed. If something else comes up, I will contact the board members immediately and make you all aware if we found something else. So you need a motion? Yes. This time? Mm hmm And that's a motion is stated for uh, not to exceed 33 $38,955 for the repairs. I'll second. Okay. <coughs> and that, let's be specific about the, where the repairs are going to take place. The repairs are for Capes 1 pump station, 1 pump discharge piping. Good. And there, there's no advantage to delaying this any more than it's already been delayed? There's no advantage to delaying it unless you're planning on doing a complete rehab of all the wet well piping and the valve vault. But then you're delaying it out to you will to fix to update all that and you're going to spend over two hundred thousand dollars. Because what you're going to do is replace everything with stainless. So at this point I think we can get this we can get more value out of it and more years out of it and I think we'll go back to facility plan and that's when we'll see, we'll go off back to that to do up, upgrades later. Okay. So what, what's the chance of other similar pipes in either this pump station or other pump stations developing similar problems? 
the well, it's a hundred percent yes, Jeff. If you look at the what wells we haven't rehabbed in twenty years, but the conditions are not like this, so they still have life left in them. So they're not showing the deterioration like this one is showing. And remember, it's only really shown it on one side, and. It, it's something to do, it looks like the, the nuts and stuff rusted and the pipe flanges started to separate. Now we're not gonna know the condition of those flanges until everything is taken apart and we can isolate that one side and get the elbow off. Then they can tell if it just is just rust, they can clean up with a grinder and as long as it accepts a gasket, you can put it back together. This is just an emergency fix. But it, you know, if we find too much damage, we'll have to shut that one pump down and come back to the board and say, we're going to have to get engineering in here and re-engineer this, probably the wet well itself. But I don't anticipate which drives up the cost, which will drive the cost. The, the first suggestion from engineering was to replace it all with stainless. Uh, that would have gone out to bid. We already have one project in the works that we're trying to get done with the manual transfer switches. So this, I believe, is your best option. It's, it's your cheapest fix, and it will also last many years. I guess my question is, is this a, a symptom of other similarly aged piping that's going to start failing? Yes and no. It's always a symptom. We can't see the insides of the pipe. Right. So we don't know their true condition. I mean, they look good painted on the outside, but you don't know if something's rusting from the inside out because of the harsh conditions. Yeah. So none of them are showing that type of wear. Okay. Even the one pump next to it, that piping's not showing this type of wear. Which is the same. Which is in the same, same level. age. Yeah, same age, yeah. yeah. So this one has just got there faster. Just has got, yes. And it also had stuff on the outside and you knew it was coming? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we rehab that down there back in 2010, 11, it didn't show this kind of deterioration on that one side. Mm -hmm. So in there working and adding stuff, contractors could have disturbed the pipes a little bit. Which, which, which side are we on? Capes one were on the inside. So it would be pump one. Is it pump? Mm -hmm. So it's pump one. But I mean, north, east, south. Or? Uh, it'd be, it, it would be on the north side. Okay. Yeah. So if you walk down there, it's on the side closest to the uh, to the building, right? To the generator room. But things that you, you really can't, <laughs> you know, use as a determination or whatnot. But there's a lot of movement, ground movement mm -hmm. there. That. It could be, but they put a new lid on it, a new concrete top. Mm -hmm. So all these, all this work was done, which could cause vibration, which could have, right. you know. But but ten years ago, ten plus years ago, when they did this, it didn't show any of this. So. Does one pump station or the other in the capes operate more frequently or? Capes one, the one that we have to repair. Yeah. Capes two pump station up uh, up top mm -hmm. pumps down to Capes one. Capes one is your one that discharges. So it's the harder work. It's it's the one that carries the load for the for the entire okay. development. Yes. Okay. So that makes sense why it's experiencing more problems than Cape two. Capes yes. Two, in a sense. Yeah, in a sense, and it's older than Capes two. So it was in, it was built and constructed in 1993. Capes two was constructed in 1995. This is not normal for this, you know. We've only had one other pump station that had a problem like this, and the pipes rotted through from the inside out, and that was the old Happy Camp uh, wet well and, and pump setup then. Where these become more critical, which we don't home, we don't have any of these pumps anymore, is when they're vacuum primed. Because if the pipe has rusted holes in it, it can't draw a vacuum and prime the pump. We've gotten rid of all that style of pumps, and these all are submersible. So even if this got a bigger hole in it, what you would do is your pump would run longer because someone would be squirting back into the wet well. 
So it would just work harder, burn some more electricity, things like that. But you're not going to, you're not in the danger of a spill of an environmental, you know, problem or anything like that. It'll all be contained where it's at. Yeah, we are in the discussion now. Is there any more discussion? <clears throat> if not, all in favor of Jeff's motion, which was to give you a ceiling to work with. Yeah, so on the estimate, we believe is high, so enough to exceed $38,955. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Once they get it done, do you guys have to do any testing on it? Or they do the testing after they throw the pipe on? It'll be all done. When, they do, when they're finished, we'll run the pumps and make sure there's no leaks. Yeah. So it's all tested while they're here. We'll, we'll, we'll pressure test it to make sure it's all sealed. Before they drive away? And yeah, well, before they unhook stuff. the cranes and anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it'll, it'll be tested before, the, before they leave. So um, the treatment plant under number three, uh, we received the new automatic um, air valves, down the valves. We have a new one new one is installed on basin one. We're operating basin two and three now, so we can't install those new ones while they're under operation. It takes about a day to change it out, but we do have the parts. If if one of the valve actuators fails, we can move that basin to our other one that's, that's ready to go, and then we can shut that one down, clean it up, and then we can upgrade the valve there. So we do have the, sp the, the spare parts for doing that. Cool. And of course, blower three, as, as last month, we're still waiting for the spare pump to come back from repair, and that's due, well, that's due tomorrow, actually, but we're still waiting to hear from them. But I guess I didn't understand. You're actually just running one basin, right? We're running, operating two bases. Two, okay. Because yeah. uh, you had said something about operating one because it's so dry. We were operating one basin up until last week. Uh, so our loading became so high, not our flows, but our loading became so high, it was too much for one basin and really not enough for two. But we were left with no choice but to start up basin two, which is the one we were going to change the air valve out. Now, we, now we're, we're on hold until, until we switch basins again. Um, capital improvement projects. Um, so in here, I, this is not an, um, I attached the email, and the email was for upsizing the generator that would also encompass use at the Neatarts pump station. So we did find out we can upsize it. There is no penalty from Kohler, from the manufacturer, to cancel the one. The Delta was, from the manufacturer was about $55,000. Uh, and so I received this, but I actually got the change order today. Um, now the change order has to be um, sent through engineering to make sure that the change order is complete and that, the, that they included everything in the change order, nothing's missing components, you know, if, if the contractor missed something. So it has to be verified first. But the total change order so far as it stands until I get confirmation from the engineers that it's correct is 136,801. And that, that is adding the larger generator, dropping the other one off, and then adding all of the manual transfer switch and associated parts and pieces to the NETARTS pump station. So that's the net for? That's the net. That's the net. Mm -hmm. Do they give us any credit for the old generator? Do they take Yes. It? Okay. So we received uh, $48,000, $48,075 for the other generator that was in the original bid. Okay. And that offset the price for the new generator. Okay, just to be clear, the $100,000 is with the offset. So yes. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. Right it's total. It's total, including the upsize generator, yeah. and the addition of adding the manual transfer switch equipment 
to the Detroit Power Station. So this new generator will operate, according to the engineers, will operate one set of pumps at the Neatarts pump station. And what was what were we working with before we before we upgraded, before we upsized? What was the total? What was the total of the we, first bid job? We we upsized because we found out that we didn't have to order separate ones. And before we had well, ordered forty five kilowatts. Yeah. So you're looking at probably. Um, to buy the second generator alone would have been about $145,000. Plus the $48,000 that you would have paid for this generator. Okay. So by being able to upsize it, you basically saved over $100,000. And even saving $100,000, this is going to be our, our net. This yes. Is All right. Yeah. So that's the change order on top of the original contract that was. I don't have it in front of me. I should have got it to give you an update, but it was a little over 100000 Okay. And I've looked at this. We have the money and our capital resource to cover this. And the estimated completion date here, February 6, 2024, that's when we, we would be on the other side of this whole project? Uh, theoretically, yes. That's the date that we receive the new generator. Oh, okay. It's 24 weeks. <coughs> We need to make a motion for the for the work, for the change order. Oh, so there's there's two ways you can do it. You can make a motion at this cost, and if it the engineers find a mistake in the in the calculations on the um, on the uh, uh, contractor, then they'll have to redo it or add it or subtract it or something like that. <coughs> you want us to wait? Well, so the second part to this that the engineer wanted me to make sure. I already gave them the okay to cancel the one and order the new generator. I know the board would already want to do that just because of the amount of weeks it takes to get it. Right now, we're already looking at February, which is about the same time we would have gotten the old generator. And so we were still within that timeline for the, uh, for the manufacturer not to be penalized. So I went ahead and did that. Um, but I had no idea what the manual transfer switch and equipment was going to cost until they put it together. That's what came with all of this. Um, chances are it's probably not going to be, I mean, I, I pretty much think that the numbers are correct. I've gone through all, all of the stuff that I can. So, um, so when we're going to okay this subject to the possibility of having to Yeah, okay yeah. so I've got some more. Whatever you're comfortable saying, I would suggest that we approve this so I can keep so I can keep the engineers and the contractor moving so we can get this started and get it done. Are we approving the change order? Uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would do a approval of the change order subject, to, the subject to any yeah. any final any final amount. John's got something. Why don't you open like you were getting ready to say something? No. I agree. Oh, okay. Because we're already in a proposed contracting area and this is a change order as opposed to a totally new right. proposed contract. Mm -hmm. So okay, so I move to approve the change order subject to having to revisit it if the engineers found something material that needs to change. I can always update the I mean if it comes in cheaper, but I I, I think that this is probably pretty accurate. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion? If there's none, all in favor Aye. of the proposed Aye. change order? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Okay. So the um, yeah, um, there was one other the topographic survey for Lower Avalon to place a pump station. Um, that topic the topographic survey came back. Now. We, Barker just got it to West Tech today, and I got a I don't, We didn't on have it. that on your list of items, but you bring it. I'm bringing it up because I, I didn't know when I was going to receive this, so I just received it after district report was written. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> they have identified one to two lots down there. I just want the board to know uh, they need to finalize it. I can't open AutoCAD. So I can't go in and look at everything other than a print that they sent me. 
but uh, they have identified two possibilities, lot one and two, or lot one or lot two, or possibly both the lots. I flagged them up here so that you would see they're at the very base of Avalon and uh, Grand. Not Grand. Uh, Glenwood, right down here, so they're at the very bottom. Both these lots are empty currently, so I know that we wanted to look at getting that nailed down so we can start the process of purchasing the property. So there is some other work they have to do, but once we get to preliminary that those are one or two of those lots are identified as what they need, because now they got to do the design of the preliminary design for layout. So that'll figure out what footage they're going to need, what footprint they're going to need to set this stuff. Do we know what the lot costs are yet? No, I had to get I had to get first oh. lots identified. We don't know if they're for sale even. No, no, the board will have to authorize probably next month um, or at any time to start inquiring about the lots. Just so you know, there's already a lot of inquiry and excitement down there of this possibly going in. So, and realtors are already calling me and asking if I know what lot we're, we're, we're looking at. So, I don't know how it all got out to there, but anyway, that's where it's at. Who owns the lots right now? I have no idea. They just, I just got notification today of which ones are the possibility. So, it'll still be another couple of weeks before it's, it's nailed down exactly which lots, but it really can't go anywhere else but, but right here. It's kind of the bottom. It's it's the bottom. We don't say that too loud. No. <laughs> too much. I'm sorry. We well, no. There's is. possibilities across the street too. But <laughs> I like to just you know. Yeah. So. Say that to them. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you know. I don't. I don't like being in. No. 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 And so. Jerry, without saying it, you know whose property we yeah, deal sure with. Sure it is. Yes. Yeah. So I just want to give the board an update that finally came in. Uh, so we will be looking at this fiscal year of going out and, you know, soliciting the properties, so. But oh, it's one, not two lots. There, there's still more planning to do. We, like I said, it's narrowed to an area, not to an exact lot yet, because we still, they have to do all the planning, the draft planning for the board to look at on the footprint that's going to be required. Okay. Maybe they'll donate it to the district. It's a tax write-off, right? <laughs> you don't know how funny you are right now. I know. Uh, I kind of just picked up on it, so a little bit of sarcasm there. This, uh, this property wasn't even donated. We had to buy it. So. I'm sorry. We're gonna the, this this property. property right here, yeah. the conditions that they wanted to donate the property were not reasonable. You start to run into a lot of I want hookups for free. I want this for free. I want that for free. But so we're, we're we are moving forward on that. So <clears throat> it's just kind of funny that it all came today when I've been right. trying to get it for months. But so I want the board to know we are moving on that. We're still trying to get the parts to repair our HVAC system. The numbers haven't really changed, other than I believe that the. Uh, the part that I have down here for 8000 might be a little bit less, but once you add labor in to put it all in, I don't know what it's going to, what the final number is, but we're still working on that. Um, so just to let you know, I, I may have said this last month, I apologize if I've already said this, but we ended up having to cancel our HVAC order for the fire department just because it was another two years out, and we ended up going, I'll find the company name, but we ended up doing the ductless, mm -hmm. and they had that available in stock. A little bit more, a couple thousand less than what you're being ordered there. This is just a part that's not yeah. changing out. It's this building, right? Yeah, it's for this building. Yeah. Uh, this is all block walls, and I, I think a lot of fire stations are made out of brick too. Yeah. But uh, all the way, all of our ducting runs through the building. They would have to put that out there. There's no way for them to really come and put a unit without punching holes and coming through it everything. It seems like stuff's on back order for, yeah. for a really So this of. part is is available, um, but Ocean Air has to 
either set up an account or pay with a credit card or something to get the part. So I don't know where Dan is exactly on that process. But I just talked to him a couple days ago. We had a problem with the AC here, and it, it wouldn't, it just kept sucking in hot air and it wouldn't stop. So they sent it out of tech. Um, is there any questions on, on that? Okay, so lastly, on the last page, I went in and I did an update on the operation summary, and they updated the things that we've worked on and have in the last year or so. So I've updated that, and I'll start putting an update, like this was August 15th, so as we make more progress on things, I'll start adding more into this operation summary. Okay? Good. That was an FYI for the board. Old business, the email from Jeb Kleiner and Mary Flock. And uh, <coughs> you should also have attached, or it was sent out for it earlier today, the hold harmless agreement from our attorneys. That would go with what they're requesting. So we just need to make a motion to approve the whole homeless agreement? Yeah, is that what you need? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Take a motion to <coughs> approve the whole homeless agreement. I'll second. Discussion. I read it. It's about three times as long as I expected. It's covered by the most numbers I've been seeing. <laughs> the only thing I have to do then now is just supply him the tax lot information and stuff like that. You, you saw it. John, did you get a chance to look at it? Yes. <laughs> you had the same reaction I did? Yes. <laughs> I, 